Hey guys, I am done pussyfooting around. This is the final video on the Jets offense. I think maybe I'll talk about some later in the video, but this is going to be the full version of the gun bunch out of the Jets. Now I already did, I think, two videos on the bunch. I'm kind of mad at myself because I was kind of like milking that content. I was really just do planning on doing one video per play, but that's not really what I want to do. Because I feel like if it's all in one video, it's way more compelling. It's way better to watch. So there you go. This is it. A couple of things you need to know for this offense. You need a hot rod master quarterback. I currently am running Rich Gannon. He, he's perfectly fine for me. There are some better quarterbacks out there. Like Deshaun Watson or something. But for me, Rich Gannon with hot rod master. Inside Dead Eye. That's what I have on him. Gives him like perfect accuracy. And uh, what's it, Gunslinger? This is the perfect quarterback for me. Now you can do whatever you want, but in my opinion, you really do need Hot Rod Master, obviously, because this is a Hot Rod Master offense, and you need Gunslinger. Those are the two most important abilities for a quarterback. If without Gunslinger, your, your throw animation is going to be just slow, and it's not going to be a good time. For the other abilities, I'm kind of split. I'm trying out different things, seeing what works for me. I used to be big on Playmaker. That's something that I really used to be heavy on. But I realized that I was creating some very bad habit for my, habits for myself. Really just looking to Playmaker every play. And not focusing on the concepts as much. And that really made me a worse player overall. So this is why I'm going away from Playmaker. If you want some Playmaker plays, I'll obviously add that in another video. But this is going to be without Playmaker. I'm currently using... One edge protector just to have like one guy that can block. I'm using uh, route tech on my wide receiver, Tyreek Hilton, for 2 AP. He's a route runner. Get a route runner uh, wide receiver to make sure you get it the cheapest. And I'm using route tech on my tight end and Waller. I'm currently using the full 50 out of 50 Raiders theme team. Now with that out of the way, I want to kind of talk about how I'm, how I'm approaching different offenses. First of all, let's talk about the audibles I use. I use Jet Stig. You can see that's the play right here. Jet Stig. I'm using Flood. That is, obviously, you guys know Flood. Was also in the uh, Panthers bunch. Some of these plays are very similar to the Panthers bunch. And I'm using C-Spot. C-Spot, where are you? There, there you are. Also, for trip side and offset, th this is a play uh, formation that I also set audibles for. I want RPO Trap Bubble, which is that square play right there. I want RPO alert bubble, which is right here. I want uh, RPO buck alert bubble. Uh, that's kind of like you have a trap, you have a buck. That means it goes one way and then cuts it back all the way with a pulling guard. Very, very nice. And I have level in sale. Uh, level sale just to, for a pass play. Also like a bunch of tight end audibles. You, I pretty much only use people over. There is a full scheme out of this. I have not developed it yet. There, that's maybe the next thing that's coming. But for now, I want to just talk about trip side and offset. That is the formation that I audible to when I want to run the ball and gun bunch. Now, let's talk about different things that I might face. I'm currently in the Miami Dolphins defense. I'm going to switch, though, uh, within, uh, for the play setups. But just give me some give me some time. Uh, there is a very popular blitz out of the Nickel 55 odd. And I will show you how to block that right now. That is the most important thing. You need to know how to block this blitz or else you'll be screwed. So, send mic one. I'm gonna just come on in that. And let's just call it C spot. Okay. So, how do, uh, I'll just set the blitz on defense if you want. I can do a video on it too. But what you do is you wanna make sure you block the halfback. That is it. And now it really depends. If your opponent is pressing, then all you can even send out the halfback in that case. You just have to ID the outside, this outside cornerback right here. And now, if I snap the ball, you will see. This blitz is easily blocked. There could be a spy on the guy that is blitzing in the stock place. So, for example, this guy right here could be in a spy. It really does not matter. It really does ma not matter. I'm going to press on defense. And you can see I'm sending out the running back on a route. So it really does not matter. I'm going to snap the ball. I'm going to send the spy. It does not matter at all. This is absolutely locked up. And then, of course, from there, you can set up your man beaters all you want or your zone beaters or whatever. So, this is how you block that. Now, there are also some other situations where your opponent does not uh, press. And in that case, it's sometimes a little bit random. So how you make sure that you block the splits 100% of the time, you double team right here, you ID the mic here, and then you make sure you have to block the halfback for this one. So now you'll see, boom, nice. I'll just throw that. Yeah. Really easy to block once you know it. Just make sure you really are safe with it. 
the obvious advantage of your opponent pressing is that you can send out the running back on a route. There's another option for you. But if he's not pressing, you have to know double team. I did the mic just like we did last year with big down one for six. This also works for this. So I'm going to show you this one more time. Make sure the running back is blocked. So I'm going to block him right here. Boom. Double team. I did the mic. Snap the ball. Nice. And this time, you can see we get the time. Nice. That was obviously not a good throw. I just wanted to throw the ball to get to the next play. But this is how you deal with that now. There are some other things uh, out of the Miami Dolphins that really can be scary this time. Mid blitz. I'll just show you this. And against mid blitz, I'm just going to show you my philosophy. I want to test my opponent's run defense. So I'll just show you the setup real quick. And then he he would move this guy in right here. And he would then touch up the guy. And it's, it, it seemed like uh, you've got seven people rushing when in fact you only have six. So this means you have five people in coverage with your user. But it's easily, but it, the game recognizes it as seven people blitzing. So what I do in that case is this is where the audibles come into effect. RPO, trap, or bubble. What people would then do is they will is they will pre uh, spread the linebackers just in hope to get a better chance. But this really is not that great run defense. Not that great run defense, my bad. My apologies, I can't speak English. So, I want to see if my opponent has run defense first. And then, of course, if they show me that they have run defense, it then, of course, gets really tough. And you really have to just kind of guess whether they're sending the pressure or whether they're dropping into coverage. Then it, it's really just a mind game. That's, an, that's up to you then to get comfortable with it the more you play it. But thankfully, I've seen fewer and fewer people run this. And actually, have started. most people have started running 3 through 5 wide. So I will quickly uh, switch playbooks and then we'll go to the actual passing plays now that we know how to pick up different uh, blitzes or how I attack different sorts of formations on defense. Now let's switch and let's get into the fun stuff. Also, I haven't said this yet. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. It will help me out a lot. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers so bad. I hope this video helps you. And if you feel like you've gotten better by watching this video, please make sure to hit that sub button. I will also do kind of an adapted version for the uh, Seattle Seahawks punch. So if you don't want to miss that, if you're more in this, into the Seahawks punch, Obviously, if you don't want to miss that, subscribe. It really would help me out a lot. Now, let's get into it. First things first, I have to uh, reorder the depth chart just to make sure that I have the best players at each position. So, we'll just do that. Boom. Now, we'll start by beating man coverage. That is the number one thing that you have to watch out for. I'll just quickly stuff these guys up because I really do not need these guys pass rushing me. And what people will do is they will come out in... They will come out in nickel, 3 through 5 normal. I can't even talk. And then they will just audible to another play. Or not, they will audible to another play. They will audible to... They will audible to 335 wide. Now, what is the difference between 335 normal and 335 wide? You have a better chance of... You have a better way of sending pressure, basically. That's what it is. Uh, if you set up this play, if it looks like this, you never know whether your opponent is going to use a rush you or whether he's not going to. So this is kind of the threat. The user rush... And also, right here at these outside spots, you have linebacker. No, he has safeties that can play zones that really get out there quickly. So that is why a lot of people are running this. The main defense is going to be a double Mabel. Very simple. That double Mabel means on both sides we have a curl flat and a hard flat. Sorry, I just got itch right there. And how do we attack that? Kind of like the main play that we're going to focus on is going to be a flood for this one. We're going to put McCaffrey on a option route. We're going to put Jones on a smoke screen. We're going to put Hopkins on a hit route. And we'll motion snap Hopkins to the outside. Now you will see how we have circle and triangle both open. It just depends on what we want to throw. I'll do this one more time. This is my main setup to defeat the double Mabel. It's really difficult to stop that if you also want to double Mabel. Like you really have to just crazy like i don't know a better way to put it so we'll just motion snap hopkins to the outside snap him right there and now you will see how i can just throw that even though that didn't look open the outrod was open behind it let's just pretend that the outrod was covered by the guy that was watching the hitch so obviously right there that is my main play 
but I want to take a step back and I want to focus on man coverage. Man coverage really is a pain in the ass. Uh, I really struggle with beating man, I'm not going to lie to you. That is probably the one thing that I struggle with the most, but I want to show you some of the things that I know uh, just to make sure I leave you off with at least something. It's not the best. I don't feel the most comfortable against man coverage, but yeah, it's really... I just want to at least show you what I know. So I like really, I like really like this C post or not this C spot corner out. I'm gonna smart route Thomas. I'm gonna put Jones on a post, and then it really depends. I rather like uh, put my tight end on a crossing route. Once again, this is a hot route master offense, and then it really depends. I like putting my halfback out on an option route. That's good. But now let's just snap the ball and we'll just see if anything gets open. Is right there in this case, it's going to be the crossing route. This crossing route for the tight end really is something that you want to look out for, but there are some zones to cover it obviously, so it's not going to be there all game. You just have to find the times when it is open and go to it. Uh, this smart route, uh, corner route by or from Thomas, I'm gonna try to hit that now. This really is random. I have my route tech right there that gives me a better chance, but if your opponent has one step ahead, an acrobat, or even just one step ahead. This really can be difficult to get open. That is one thing that I have noticed. And if your opponent is running cover two, uh, one of the things that I use to attack this is if my opponent went with something like curve flats, and I would be able to smart route that, one thing that I would do is I would just slap it over the top, but mo more and more people are running cover two men and keeping the uh, cover two safeties over the top so this means now you either have to bullet pass it or if you lap pass it you're gonna throw a pick so that is why this corner out even though it often beats man coverage you really can never be sure and you really have to be careful because that is probably the route that I throw most of my picks on against man coverage that and the post just thinking that it's open and then just the user sprints back and yeah like I said man coverage is the thing that I struggle with the most just try to hit that crossing out from the tight end and you'll be golden there are some other plays uh something that i've noticed recently is i will i will uh put mccaffrey in an option route i'll smart route that i want to put jones on a hitch and then backside i'll do kind of like a setup like this uh or i will motion out hopkins and then put him on a post stuff like that you know i'll just quickly go back right here boom so now if you see uh this option route is going to beat man uh, that is about as tight as level to be covered. If you have McCaffrey and you have play fake on him, you can get him up to 90 medium route running. And in that case, of course, he's absolutely going to torch. Like McCaffrey is really good receiving halfback. You guys already know that. I just wanted to reinforce that and make sure you get someone with 90 medium route running. That is why I love Elvin Kamara. Did I say the wrong name before? I might have found who I don't know. One more time, this is kind of like my play. Uh, the nice thing about this also is that it's kind of like offbeat. Your opponent's like re really going to be expecting it, so that is why I love running that. Now, there are a lot more man beaters. For example, this flood play is actually pretty gorgeous. I will just go into cover two man. And just for the sake of showing this, a lot of people like to shade underneath and outside. I'll just put that guy in. Okay. Now, what I would do here. Is, is I would do the same thing backside that I did before with the option out in the smoke screen. And I would motion step Hopkins to the outside. And now you can see how he gets a step. I can just pass lead that inside. That's an absolute touchdown. Now, why is that happening? If I motion snap, he's my, my guy that's motion snapped is not going to be able to get pressed. Now, the only thing that can prevent someone getting burned over the top if they shade underneath is if they get a press and throw off the release. But if they don't get that, like they didn't just didn't get right there, um, we can really trouble them. So, for example, right here you will see that this is pretty consistent. Uh, right there he played it a little bit better, but still we got a step on him. And that's basically what you want. In Ultimate Team, you're going to have a way better chance. But I feel like I'm kind of over this now. I feel like I've told you guys how to beat man coverage. Some of the other plays that I'll talk about... Sp focus specifically on man coverage. This was just to kind of bring you guys or like let you guys know the concepts. And now we'll get into beating zones, which is actually what most people are starting to run again. Man coverage, it really is a 50-50, but you also have to have plays to beat zone 
and that is what we're going to focus on now let's get into it so i figured the best way to go about this would be to, to just go play by play let's talk about spacing switch i already did a video on this so i'm just going to revisit this this briefly and we're just going to go with the standard double mabel setup we'll go into some more specific setups later but for now this is what we'll keep what we'll stick what we'll stick with i cannot talk for the life of me um but we're gonna go with something like this then with the tight end he's kind of a wild card we're gonna put McCaffrey on a flat Hopkins on a curl Tom is on an out route and Mc and Kittle is kind of like a wild card we can put him on a crosser or we can keep him blocked I'll just keep him blocked for now and now you can see uh, why this is so nice against the double evil kind of gets an inside positioning as my battery level is very low uh, he kind of gets an inside positioning and that is what we want then and now put the tight end on the crosser. That is, of course, something that is annoying. I have to always audible. So now, I'll snap the ball. Nice, nice, nice. The curl is covered. All right, let me just... That was so weird. Uh, white just dr drifted back very slowly. Slowly, let me try that again. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. There you go. That's my setup. Now you see, you can throw that. Uh, the two routes on the left side also do a good job of drag dragging down the zones. So that is why I like that. There is another play that I would like to show you. And that is Hopkins on a flat. Thomas on a post. McCaffrey on that same flat route. And now you will see how... Uh, that looked really ugly. Let me just audible. I forgot to audible right there. Uh, with most people running cover 3, that is one of the best plays that you can run. Okay, I'll just back that guy off. Once again, flat on McCaffrey, flat on Hopkins, post on Thomas. And now, X is open, square is not really open. But in that case, we would have the post route to Thomas. And that's pretty much all for this play. There's not really too much else to it. So let's now keep on moving on. I'll just do this kind of uncut. Also, there's no music in this. I feel like it's easier to listen to me if there's no music. Z-Spot, let's talk about Z-Spot. I already talked a little bit about it, but now let's go more in-depth with it. So, yeah, let's go. There are a couple of ways you can set this up. You can try to get the corner out open, and that is perfectly fine. If I want to get the corner out open, there are a couple of things. Okay, so this is how... Let's just take a step back. I get the corner out open by either doing this against cover 3, I can motion out. That also works against cover 3. Or against cover 2, what I would do is I would not smart route it. I would put Hopkins on an out route. Tom is on. Keep him on this corner. Uh, put kill on a streak. And then motion snap to the outside. Now, those are the three ways that I'll ever get the corner out open. I reset the play. And backside, it really depends on what I, want, what I see. Sometimes I go with this setup. What is, why is this so nice, you ask? Uh, well, little Timmy. It is nice because now if I wait a little bit, I can throw that with a pass lead down. I need to change the zone drops, my bad, you guys. What a lot of people will do on defense is they will set their zone drops. Oh, let me just end the play. I'll set their zone drops probably to curl flats, let's say 20 yards, regular flats to 5. So 20 yards, 5. Now we can actually work. Because it only makes sense to lab against stuff that you also see online. So, Z-Spot. There, there you go. So, we're going to smart route the uh, corner out. Hitch. Streak Hopkins. Curl. Flat. And now you see how this is going to work. So. Now, if we look at this. Very simple read. Alright. Left is, right is kind of covered. I'll just throw that with a low pass. Aggressive catch it. That's very important. Make sure to aggressive catch that, and you get a nice window. Also, on the right side, if I get enough time, as I will, uh, famous last words, I will sometimes be able to throw that corner out. Of course, right there, he had the perfect zone drops. It's not always going to be there, so you have to be careful with that. One thing that I sometimes try, this is a little bit more risky I sometimes try running it with the bunch to the short side 
because this kind of shortens up the corner out and makes it kind of get open. You have to be careful with this. If your opponent, if you, if it's not getting open to the wide side, chances are it's going to get open to the short side. It really just depends on you uh, kind of figuring out uh, what works and then adapting to it. Now let's talk about beating cover two for a second. I, w I just want to show you this uh, because I feel like it's important for me to tell you or to show you how I beat cover two. My favorite play against cover two, to be honest, is the wheel route on McCaffrey and the thing that I said previously on the right side. So if I take my time right here, obviously you guys know how deep corner out of punch along the sidelines, how they just absolutely torch. So I don't think that I need to show you the, show this to you guys too often. But we'll do this one more time just for the sake of showing it. One more time. You don't even have to motion snap, but if you motion snap, it kind of does a better job sometimes. And then you can rack that up the field, try to get a touchdown, which I can't. But that is a nice window to attack against cover two. Maybe one more thing. Uh, let me. Can I? Thank you. Uh, one more thing, maybe. You can sometimes look to hit that streak up the middle. That is definitely something that you can throw. You just have to be careful with it. That is a nice quick throw, but the user is going to be in the middle. So unless you really see your, your user dashing to maybe the running back because he sees that the running back is not going to be covered, be careful with that seam pass. Now, I already told you guys uh, about the curl on the left side. Sometimes just a simple drag does the job as well. So let's go with that. Boom. Also, like for you guys that don't know how to block the user rush, really the only thing you have to do is block the running back. If you block the running back, there's no chance for the user rush to get in. And then, of course, we can make our read from there. The drag back side is really nice. Sometimes against cover two, what I will do is I will just go with something like this. Not even have the wheel route and just like have a backside in route just to have like a check down. Do I have cover two right here? Yes, I have. Alright, so if I feel like my opponent's user is really gonna jump down to the uh jump to the right side against cover two just to make sure the corner doesn't get open, I'll just put a backside in route right there and it does the job beautifully for me. Alright, so let's get on to the next play. Uh, I'm kind of taking my time with this. I hope you guys like this. I'm going to put time steps in the video description, of course. And also you can see it uh, when you're scrolling through the video on the playback uh, thing. Bar. There you go. Dig return. There really is only reason, one reason to run dig return, in my opinion. But I will show this, nevertheless, because I think that it's kind of important. Why am I itching today? Jesus. Uh, I'm running against man coverage right here. And there's a nice uh, way you can attack this. This Hopkins route does, does the nice job against main coverage sometimes. It really is random though, so really be careful with this one. Sometimes it works. I just wanted to say that these dark sig routes, they can sometimes do work. I'll just go to this cover two man now because uh, don't mind. All right. And you can see how we turn him around right there. Not the best pacing. Ah, But just so you guys know, that is there for you. Now let's get on to the mesh play. This mesh play was recommended to me by a friend of mine uh, in the main community, of course. And he was talking about how this... Actually, let me go to cover two man. He was talking to me about how this is a nice play against man coverage. And I was like, what are you talking about? This looks very bad. This R1 route is really good against man. So how I would pair this is also the circle route does kind of a good job. It's kind of like a similar C uh, route to the C-spot corner route. I would smart route that Hopkins route. And uh, then motion step into the outside. Also have a post from the left, and then you can see right here. Sometimes it's just sometimes it's just insane what these guys play on defense. But you see how we can get an inside release sometimes. Uh, this looks so bad right here. Let me try that again. So one more time, a smart route circle on the outside, motion snap him, and now you will see. Now we get it. Now we get it. All right, all right, all right. I was worried there for a second. This still works. You just have to be careful with it because that is one thing that one step ahead ahead really like to do. They really like doing that, just jumping in front of it, this route right here if they have no business actually doing it. So in this case, I was smarter with it a little bit. You really have to look at if it's open. There's a chance. Just be careful with it. That is all that I would say. There's not too much else that I can. I uh, recommend 
maybe a setup like this, but this is really getting creative. Uh, this is really getting creative, so I'll just snap the ball right here, nice. Sometimes this post win, this post wins, and not always. Oh my bad, my bad. I want, I want to show you guys this. Oh my god, I almost forgot. Uh, one of the things that I have gotten into recently is motioning against man coverage is motioning that uh, that corner out from Z spot across just like that. Keep it smart, routed, and now you will see how this just absolutely wins. This just wins. So nice. Almost didn't say that. I can't believe that I almost forgot to say that. Uh, also, this kind of reminds me. I will put a reference sheet up over at... Uh, what is it called? I can't remember. Pape. My bad. Pape. Uh, for five bucks, uh, there you can see all the plays uh, written down. Of course, everything that you see in this video is also going to be over there. So you're not going to miss anything. But if you want it kind of like neatly written down, like I'll also put like the screenshots of it, of the actual setups in there just for you guys who want to just be able to take a quick look at them there you go maybe some of you guys are interested i just want to make sure to give you that opportunity but yeah this is all for mesh really not that great i will say there is this one route but other than that meh kind of meh but now we get into the fun stuff which is bunch trail uh, bunch trail that is really something that you can pretty much duplicate if you've out on master so it's not that great previously or for regular teams, it's a nice play to have because it has a skinny post and it has a corner out. But in ultimate team, you can get both those things. So I really do not think that I need to go over this. I've already talked about a lot of skinny posts and then uh, corner out combos. So we'll go about that maybe another time. Let's talk about Flood. Flood, I already said, told you guys the man beat out of this with the motion snapped uh, streak route to the outside. And we'll now go about attacking the the, the the double maple so this time you will see how the out route gets covered you can see both circle and triangle are wide the fuck open really nice that is to attack the guy that's always double mabling now of course to combat that we're gonna just put a, the running back on a flat route and that's all you need that's all you need my bad that was like really bad i didn't even auto let me try that again um hmm. So now, if my opponent is scared, he will put two vertex out there to cover both of my hitches. Now, in that case, I can switch uh, between uh, the. I can switch between uh, this play and the double hitches. My opponent pretty much has to guess which one is coming. If he's not ready, then of course he's going to get torched. Also, uh, the user of your opponent really has to be on point. He has to use it between the in route and the out route. Really takes the user to. Your user really has to be smart. And if you have a chance and you can kind of pro, uh, prolong the play, I'll show you this right here. So let's just say that our opponent is going to cover square with this user. I'm going to man him up. He's going to beat the man coverage, but of course the user is going to be able to cover it. So now if I take enough time, if I take enough time, I can pass lead that down. All the way down, like 6 o'clock on the left stick. And then I can fit that ball in. Be careful with that one, but you can definitely make it. Now let's talk about the big national nightmare. Cover 3 is insanely good. It's insanely good. I will try to get a cover 3 beater right here. You can just run the play stock. You see how the zone on the right kind of reacted. Of course, I did not have the ideal position of the free safety in this one. I'll just flip it. So now you see this is set up. Really is that simple to be cover three. The thing is though that cover three beaters really have been patched. And this is one of the only ones that works kind of semi-consistently. It still is difficult. But I just wanted to show you if cover three ever gets unpatched and is not so great anymore. This is the play to go to. Really nice cover three beater, very simple, very elegant. I just wanted to show you this, but let's not talk about beating man coverage with flood. And flood is really good for beating man because that's a deep out route, a deep in route, and you can, of course, get some other shenanigans like this. 
uh, option route going. So I'm going to motion snap to the outside, and you can see triangle is open, square is open, R1 would have been open if I had kind of like moved uh, in the pocket to the right, kind of gotten a better angle to throw the ball. So you see this is a nice play against Minecraft. I'll try the same thing again. Uh, this time I will look to throw to R1, just trying to move over in the pocket a little bit, right there, kind of get a step. Pass lead that all the way away from the cornerback. Really make sure that you get a good pass lead. If you throw that regularly, there's a very good chance of that being picked. So be careful with that one. It's nice though. And one thing that I have noticed uh, since playing with route tech on my tight end is if I put my tight end on an out route just like this, he's really going to get separation. And I just wanted to run this one time. You can see Kittle also has that. This out route gets nice separation. You have to throw it really quickly though because a lot of the times one step ahead is going to catch up really quick with, it, with your tight end. So be careful with that. Make sure to throw it in time. It's a whole lot of fun. Besides that, there really is not too much to talk about except for maybe something like this that I already kind of like uh, mentioned. The smart route and option route. Great against man. Gets assigned kind of like an area where your opponent's user is not going to marry for it. But, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about uh, Flood. Let's not talk about verticals. Verticals really is not that great anymore, you guys. It really is not that great. But there's one thing that kind of made it be uh, better from the last patch. And if I run this against cover three, you guys will see how I am able to motion on Hopkins. And now if I snap the ball, I can throw that. That was a really tight window. If it's pressed, it's a little bit of a more difficult throw. I will not press this time. So you will see I motion out, boom. There you snap the ball, nice. And now this gets open. Yeah, there you go. Timing, I kind of have to work on the timing. This is not something that I've ran in game. But I've seen it at the Madden Classic, again. if those guys run it, then this works. So I'll just try to get the timing down a little bit better right there. So let's snap the ball. Yeah, there you go. Kind of a better timing. Go into practice mode, try that. I really recommend trying that out before you go online with it. Because you just saw, I had to practice it a couple of times to get the timing down. This is a really nice play, though. Um, I would put the, I would put Thomas on a manual crossing route. I would block the running back. I would put Hopkins on a uh, drag route. And I would smart route X. Now, you see, if I smart route X, he's going to stop kind of there. That's a weird area to stop. The only reason why I wanted to stop right there is because then I can target him maybe. Or he's in a better position for a scramble drill. So, to recap, you can definitely motion out that circle. You can motion snap it sadly. But you still can do some work with it. And now I'll just snap this play right here. And if, it get, we, if we get a broken play and he kind of scrambles, then we can attack uh, kill. Now, against man coverage, the same set of applies. Let's just go to cover two man. Uh, let me just, yeah, there you go. As, as motion snap drag is nice because the same thing uh, as with the uh, fade. It doesn't get bumped. And a drag that doesn't get bumped really has a good chance of getting open. Just be careful once again. Sometimes acrobat one step ahead. It just goes crazy, you guys. I can't tell you how many picks I've thrown with a drag that looks open. But then one step ahead, Acrobat, he just jumps for it and makes it pick. That's that's a topic a subject for another story or for another time. Uh, this really frustrates me, so be careful with that one. Really do not want you guys to suffer as much as I suffer with that. Uh, first world problems right there. But just kind of something that you have to watch out for. Let's keep going, got much. We're kind of oh, we're almost through with it. Uh, I want to talk about Bench Pivot. Bench Pivot has a nice tight end route, and especially if you have route tech. Uh, route tech. You have a nice chance of getting open against man coverage. But for now, let's talk about zone. That couple of things you can do. Backside, same thing. That option out, I really like that. This also does a good job against zone. Kind of like sits down between zones. Uh, you can sometimes find that, of course. Make sure to read the play first because before you throw it. And then I'm going to go with something like this. Out route, streak. It's the simplest concept. Uh, right here, I will throw it to Boom, nice. Sometimes uh, the zone drop is just perfect. Sometimes it's not. You really just have to hope that you can get it done. Uh, there is another way to run this. Just like this. 
and then motion up Hopkins. He's not on the streak. So if I snap the ball, I will now really try to force feed it to Kittle right here. Yeah, nice. This is not something that I recommend trying online. If your opponent has perfect zone drops, then he just has perfect zone drops. But the same thing applies as does with Z spots. So now if I go to the short side of the field, now you will see if I do this. I snap the ball. Now his zone drop is too deep. Now I can throw that. So it's kind of like the same thing. Do you think he's going to put it on 15? Or do you think he's going to put it on 20? Maybe even 15 doesn't cover that. But whatever the uh, the specifics are, this is another part of the game where it's kind of like a mind game. Do you think he's going to put it on this depth or that depth? And based on that, you can kind of mix it up. Um, but yeah, there's not really too much uh, else to it. Uh, this play is really straightforward. There's another way where you can, of course, put Jones on an in route, just have another check down. But this is pretty self-explanatory. I can run that now. Uh, if you guys want to... Uh, watch me. I will sometimes stream over on Twitch. Uh, if you want to want to watch me run those plays, I got it out of my mouth. That's the place to go. Mesh post. Let's now keep going. Uh, we're almost done with it now. I'll just try to really go through this very efficiently. We all know how good mesh post is. We really know at this point. It's very much common knowledge. We just want to put Jones on a smoke screen. I've kind of been doing that lately. I don't know if it's better or worse. I just have been doing it. Now I'm on a slant, and then we just attack the middle of the field. Also, the longer the play develops, the slant can get open because any hard flat or some anything like that uh, will get dragged down by the. Uh, by the flat from the tight end, and we can throw the slant behind it. Also, the post can be thrown, but be careful with that post, please. Uh, please. Please be careful with that post. I really have gotten burnt on it many, many times. I am bad at throwing it. I really get lurked on it so many times, or so, so many times, so often, so regularly. You have to be a thousand percent sure to throw the post. This is one of the things that annoys me most about my game. I just keep getting lurked on that post. Also, like why I have not mentioned it yet. Uh, you can read this play right here. Um, excuse me. I throw with a low pass. The easiest thing in the world. Literally the easiest thing in the world. All you would do is low pass it. Pass lead it inside. Get a possession catch. As right here against cover 2, it doesn't always work that well. But right there, fit it in. This is specializing against cover 3, against cover 2. Meh. Not so much. This entire play is more focused on beating cover three. Another kind of similar idea is let me. This is defensive setup is this one right here. Pretty uh, pretty straightforward. It's a one-two read. All right, left is covered. I'll just throw it to the right right here. All right, very simple. This kind of also attacks the double Mabel, but be careful. A lot of users can get tricky with a lot of high-speed users out there right now. They can kind of bait between the hitch and the and, and the post. So once again, only throw the post if you're 100% sure. I can't stress that enough. One thing that's different from this play, uh, from this year to last year, the wheel route from McCaffrey does not beat man coverage anymore. So against man coverage, do not throw the wheel route. It does not work. That is one thing that I definitely want to make sure I have said. Another setup would be maybe... A zig route on Thomas. But then again, now we're getting into some... Oh, my bad. Now we're getting into some stuff that I really do not think that I have to explain to you guys. The, ma the main ideas of this play have already been said. It really is just about knowing that this play is good against cover 3. And against cover 2, it's kind of tough. You have some other plays against cover 2. This play, even though it has a post, it's, it's not really going down the field. So it's not that good against cover 2. So take that for what you will. In my opinion, this is pretty much a cover. Why are people honking in the tiniest of villages? I don't get it. Jets dig. That's the main play that really made me go to this. Sadly, it got patched. It got patched with the same thing uh, that patched all the other cover 3 videos. This is such a nice cover 3 video, you guys. I was labbing this before the patch. You did not even need a corner out. You could just leave that guy on this flat and it would beat cover three. Now, 
not so much. Not so much. You can see how this is so difficult to get over. I can't stress it enough how difficult it is to beat cover three after this last patch. And I hate it. I hate it if the coverage just cannot get beaten consistently. It's the worst thing in my opinion. It really takes away from the skill gap. But we have to adapt. In a future patch, hopefully, if uh, this gets good again. If I uh, snap the ball. Uh, we can beat cover three like this. But you see, this is no way. There is just no way to beat it right now. It's it's sad. It's sad. I know Satch, uh, Pepega Cry or whatever. We have to adapt. It's not working right now, so this play pretty much is in shambles because of that. It really is. Uh, there's not much else I can show you. There's maybe one thing. But this was the focal point of my entire offense, and it just got patched away. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I would I would go with something like this. Corner out on Hopkins, cross on Kittle, drag on Jones, and just keep McCaffrey right here. I would motion snap to the outside. This would be a cover three beater. Right now, only thing that I can throw. Is the corner with the pass lead to the side then. And of course the cross and the drag. But really this play is so powerful. We just can't beat cover 3 with it. We just can't. Right now we can't. This is why I'm currently running the uh, Seattle Seahawks. So. Yeah. Uh, that update will also come. Like I'll do a specific video on some of the plays that are only in the Seattle Seahawks. One thing. that that Now one thing I have to show you guys. This. Are you guys ready? This is gonna be so exciting. Uh, I just wanna, I just have to make one quick audible. Just to put one quick audible in there. Boom. I'm dumb. That took me like three minutes to figure out what, where I wanna put my audible. This is a nice cover four palm speeder or cover four quarter speeder. I will audible to cover four. Uh, show two right here. There you go. And this is a setup. Really, only only thing you need to do. Left side does not matter at all. Does not matter at all. Then you want to motion snap the corner out to the outside. Oh my god. Am I getting... I'm getting blown out in my own video. I'm getting aired out, you guys. I'm getting aired out. Let me... My bad, my bad, my bad. Let's go here. Most people run out of picnic lower G anyways. I just thought they were also working. It's 3 wide. I should have left this. Uh, if you're audible sometimes, uh, the match does not work anymore. So, yeah, there you go. But now this should work. All right. Nice. Cover four beater. It's set up. Make sure it's a motion snap. Oh, dude. I have zone drops on. I cannot believe this. Why is it not matching? Why is the cover four not matching? Let's try it again. Hopefully this works now. Yeah, now it works. Whew. I was almost scared there for a moment. If your opponent has zone drops on, the cover four is not going to match. But if you, if you reset your play, the zone drops just kind of get nullified. And now, doom. Uh, the cover 4 beater works because either the defender that's supposed to carry the fade down the field recognizes that that is supposed to defend that too late, or he doesn't recognize it at all. Right there, you saw the defender that covered the fade last time just completely abandoned it, only covered the crosser. And there you go. That's what happens. I'll reset the play again. If you do not motion snap, this does not work as well. It still can work, but there's more randomness to it in that case. So I prefer the motion snap to be out, to be honest with you guys. Just depends on personal preference, though. If you let him set, I feel like that's the worst. I think if I remember correctly, if you let him set, it, it plays the worst. Yeah, you, you see right here. Um... Obviously, I could have thrown a better ball, but you can see how the guy really, he does react in time, actually. So, be careful with that. Really make sure to motion snap it. If he sets against cover for match, he's not going to, it's not going to work. Just motion him back in, motion snap him to the outside, and make sure to snap it while he's motioning. Only set up for this, boom, crosser, corner out, and then motion to the outside. Let me reset the play to make sure the zone drops are off. Now, if I snap the ball... Nice. Didn't even recognize him. Walking touchdown. I've gotten many touchdowns like this. But this is the end of this ebook. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was really off the cuff, very uncut. There might have been some plays that I've missed. If I missed some of the plays, I'll edit the video anyways. 
I end the video. I see. I'll see if I've missed anything. Timestamps, as you guys can see, down there at the playback bar. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know by the like button. I really would like any person or every person who felt who feels like they learned something from this to subscribe to the channel. This has been kind of like a long way, a long time in the making. I hope this helps you guys out. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Of course, like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. Uh, if you have any questions, of course you can you can contact me in, in, with the comments. Also, like you can just send me a DM, either Twitter or Instagram, which, whatever whichever you have. Both links are in the description. Until next time, goodbye, guys. I'm stumbling over my own words. I really have not recorded in a minute. I'm going to release my defensive ebook in the near future, which is obviously rough wide. That is the thing that I'm most comfortable in right now. I want to let you guys know what I'm running on defense as well, because I feel like my defense has gotten a lot better. And you, you guys can really learn from that, hopefully. So, until next time, I'm out. I appreciate you taking the time. As always, good night, guys. And see you next time.